Hey, Pastor Jody, First Baptist Church. You know, as I was been preparing for the sermon for this week, um, I just felt like you know, God was was taking me in a direction that would would share from First John uh, chapter three as we were continuing on and closing out that chapter. And so I wrote that sermon out, and I believe it is the word of the Lord, but it's not the word of the Lord that we need to hear uh, today. And so as I was praying, uh, God led me to Daniel chapter nine, and it was actually the Bible study that we that we had here last night, uh, Wednesday night, uh, for our adult Bible study. And God, you know, as He was taking me to chapter nine, uh, because we were discussing uh, the things that were going to be taking place in this last hour, this last day. And I believe Daniel in his 70 weeks gives us the vision of things that were beginning to take place, the things that we're seeing. And so we just wanted to do a study of Daniel chapter 9. And as I was uh, preparing for that, that lesson, I just noticed the, the way and the manner in which Daniel was crying out to the Lord. Uh, he prayed with power and purpose. And I just, I just thought to myself, and of course I think it was revealed by the Holy Spirit, that this is how every believer should be praying every single day. I think sometimes we get stuck in a rut and we get those what I call oh by the way prayers. Oh by the way God if you have time, you know, could you handle this situation? But I, that's not how we're supposed to pray. We are to pray with purpose and the power of God. And so uh, I was as I was studying Daniel chapter 9, I just I just witnessed Daniel praying in that manner and it really spoke to my heart. It also reminded me of another pastor and what he's been saying for the last several months. You know, I've been I've been watching the videos of Pastor Dana Coverstone, and I know uh, when I mention that name, Dana Coverstone, a lot of people will say, "Oh yeah, he's the guy with the prophetic dreams," and other people will say, "Oh, he's that crazy lunatic." Well, as I've been watching these videos, um, I've, I've come to the understanding, and I felt from the very get go that this man was hearing from the Lord, and in some of his videos, he shares. Uh, where he's at and why God is, is using these dreams and speaking to him in this manner, it's because he's spending a lot of time with the Lord in prayer. He spent a lot of time in God's Word. And he spent a lot of time in prayer. And any time that we spend time with God, God speaks to us. And so I believe, just as I believe back uh, I, when his first video came out, I don't know if it was May or June that I saw that, that video, that first video, uh, but as soon as I started watching that video and listening to the things that he was saying, I knew in my spirit that this man has heard from God. Back in late December, moving into the first of the year, Pastor Dan Beiser had contacted me and asked if I would take part in, um, a, uh, I think it was a 48-hour prayer service, and where people would sign up for you know a few hours and pray uh, and ask the Lord um, to, to, to show us certain things concerning the new year. And I remember taking you know, that two, three o'clock hours. And as I was praying out to God um, that night, God began to speak to me. And he was speaking to me from the book of Amos. Uh, and I believe God was trying to, to warn me of COVID-19, the, the unrest in our country, and things yet to come. But as I was understanding these things at that time, I really was pondering the election. And so, you know, I was, wasn't quite hearing what God was, was trying to, to tell me. And of course, as soon as, you know, February, March came, I realized what God was saying. And so when I heard Pastor Dana Coverstone share the visions that, that God was giving him, they just really resonated with my spirit, and I knew that this man had heard from God. And recently, he came out with uh, another vision, and it was about September, he said he saw in the vision that you know God pointed to the counter in, in, in September and tapped it a few times. And he saw himself, Dana, uh, Pastor Dana saw himself standing on a calendar on September 1, and he was crying out to the Lord. And then he looked uh, to September 2nd, and he saw other people coming out. And then the calendar turned into a map of the United States, and he saw people all over the country in September crying out to the Lord. And I really believe this is of God. God is calling His church to get on our faces before Him and cry out to Him and repent of our sins. Uh, as individuals, we are to repent of our sins, but also uh, the sins of a nation, our nation. That we need to repent. We need to take ownership of those sins and repent from the sins uh, that God that we have committed against God as a nation. And so I believe 100% that we need to be be crying out to the Lord every day. 
But I believe this month of September, I believe what Pastor Dana has seen is true, that God is calling his church. And who knows? You know, God might bless us. If the church would respond in prayer, we might see revival. We might see a, a great multitude of people coming to know Jesus Christ. Wouldn't that be awesome? Uh, God's Word says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So we are to give thanks, we are to pray continually. We should never stop praying because it's the will of God. It's the will of God in our lives to, to bathe everything in prayer, to give everything. God wants all of our concerns he, he, wants, he wants what's troubling in us. He wants to know everything about us. Lord, God's Word says that we are to cast our cares upon Him because He loves us. He cares for us. And that means that we can get rid of our sins. 1 John 1, 9 says if we confess our sins, He is faithful, He is just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we need to repent. And when repentance takes place, we're made new again. We're made new. And our country can be made new and I pray that the church is responding to this call of prayer. But I pray that we're just not coming out for a show. We're not just coming out to see how many people are going to be showing up in D.C. on September the 26th for the return. Jonathan Kahn's call uh, for a return. And, and, and I know Franklin Graham is calling for prayer that same day. And so many other groups are calling for prayer. I pray that the church responds. But I pray that we're not going out just to see a show. I pray that we're going out to repent of our sins as individuals and the sins of a nation. And so, talking about that, you know, going into the Daniel chapter 9, we see that Daniel is going into deep prayer. And it's not one of those, oh, by the way, prayers. He's going into a prayer with a purpose. And so I want you to listen as I read. I'm not going to read the entire prayer because I don't have time to go through all of it. Uh, but I want, to, I want to start off in verses 1 uh, and 2, and then, and then we'll go on down through in, in just a moment. It says in Daniel chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the lineage of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. May the Lord add the blessing in the reading of his word this morning. So, Daniel chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, we see the reason that Daniel is going to prayer. There's actually two reasons that Daniel is going to prayer. Number one is he finds himself in the first year reign of King Darius, uh, or Cyrus, as you know, many has, has called him. I think back in chapter 5, it's Cyrus the Mede. So uh, Darius is king. It's a new world order coming in, and Daniel has seen, you know, Babylon changed hands a couple of times now, and he's wondering what's going to become of his people. And so it gives him cause to go to the Lord in prayer. Now, verse 2 states that Daniel, when he was considering all these things, Daniel turned to the word of, of God. He turned to Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, where Je Jeremiah talked about the 70 years of captivity of the nation of Israel in Babylon. And I believe that uh, Daniel was looking at Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 11. And this is what the word of the Lord says. And this, and this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Now Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 10 says this. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. So Daniel you know, had been in captivity for quite some time now. He, he got there in Babylon, I think about the age of 17. He's a teenager. He's now 85 to 90 years old. So he's coming to the end of these 70 years. And he's been studying the word of God. And he was reading in Jeremiah that he could understand that the end, God's word, told him the end of their captivity. And he's coming to that place. And so... These things cause Daniel to go to the Lord in prayer. You know, a new world order coming in, uh, you know, a, a new leader, you know, giving him some concern of what's going to happen to the people of, of, of Israel, those in captivity. He turns to the word of the Lord and, and he knows for a fact that they're coming to the end of the 70 years. And so he begins to cry out to the Lord. Now, I want you to notice how, how Daniel prays. 
I think that's very important on how he prays. We're also going to hear what he prays, but it's important to see how he prays. In verse 3 he says, Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. It says in the word of God that Daniel turned himself to the Lord. Now, this can mean a couple of things. Um, back when uh, the king made a decree that those that didn't worship him, if they didn't worship him, they'd be thrown into the lion's den. Of course, Daniel wasn't going to worship a, worship a false god. And so when he heard that decree, Daniel says, says in God's word that Daniel went home, opened his windows towards Jerusalem, and he knelt down and prayed towards Jerusalem, God's holy city. So the manner in which Daniel prayed, he could have been facing towards Israel when he prayed, but I also believe that Daniel got down on his face, that he humbled himself before the Lord. It says that, that he set his face toward the Lord our God. And the only way that we can come to the Lord our God is to humbly come before him. And so I believe that Daniel went to that humble state and he bowed himself before the Lord. He got on his face before God. And this is what he prayed. He said, I prayed, in verse 4, I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments. We have sinned and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and rebelled, even by departing from your precepts and your judgments. Neither have we heeded your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings and our princes, to our fathers and all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us shame of face. As it is this day to the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and all Israel, those near and those far off in all the countries to which you have driven them, because of the unfaithfulness which we have committed against you. Now all the way down in verse 13, this is what the word of the Lord says. As it is written in the law of Moses, all of the disaster has come upon us, yet we have not made our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand your truth. You see, Daniel... Coming to that 70-year end of captivity. He wanted the favor of God in his life. He wanted the blessings of God. Therefore, it led him into a, a powerful moment, a powerful prayer moment to confess his sin before God. He repented of his personal sin. Now, Daniel doesn't go into the sins that he committed because that was a personal time between him and the Lord. I believe it says in God's word that um, against you, O Lord, have I sinned, and you alone. You know, when we sin, we sin against God. We hurt. We can hurt other people through our sin, and we need to ask their forgiveness and apologize for them. But against God and God alone do we sin. And so, uh, I believe it breaks the great heart of God when we sin because we're sinning against God. And so Daniel confesses his sins. But notice also what it said in those verses after he had that that private time of confession. He went into more of a corporate time of, uh, of confession. He was confessing the sins of a nation, and he was taking ownership of those sins. He didn't say, "God forgive Israel." Don't forget, Lord, forgive Israel for for their arrogance, for their pride, for all their sinful ways. He didn't pray that. He said, "God forgive me." Before Nehemiah would go back and rebuild the city of Jerusalem. He prayed a very similar prayer. He was crying out to the Lord because the children of Israel were still distraught. You know, they were let go of their captivity and they went back to Jerusalem and, and they were just living in the ruins and it broke the heart of Nehemiah. And it led him to pray a very similar prayer. He prayed with power and purpose that, that God would rebuild the city, that God would bring healing to the land. It's that, you know, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear for, from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Daniel's praying this. Daniel is praying this very prayer. He's, he's wanting the nation of Israel to come back into the, into the wholeness of God and the oneness with the Lord. And so he's confessing his sins and the sins of a nation. America. If we are going to get right with God, we must confess our individual sins. And we must confess the sins of a nation. God, God, forgive me of the abortions that are taking place every day in the United States of America. 
God, we have turned our backs on you. And we are not keeping your commandments or your statutes. God, forgive us. God, forgive us of these sins. Return to us, Lord, the joy of our salvation. I pray that you're praying that prayer with me today. And I pray that as people are coming out in September, we don't need to wait till September 26 to pray a very powerful, purposeful prayer. We can start right now. I believe Pastor Dana Coverstone is putting out a video every day in the month of September leading us into prayer. And I believe that Pastor Dana has a great heart. I think he has a heart for the Lord. And he's wanting people to, to surrender their hearts to him. He wants to see this nation become great again. And we can only be great with Jesus Christ. With God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hey, thank you for joining me this way this week. I, I pray that you continue to cry out to the Lord. And I pray that we see revival. The Lord be with each and every one of you.